there, I'm Michelle Eagleton and you're watching Live in the Hive, the only online magazine show dedicated to theatre across Greater Manchester. Good evening if you're watching on the Isle of Manchester Facebook platform, the iconic city brand dedicated to community and culture. And a big hello if you're watching on our very own Live in the Hive Facebook page page. We've got a great evening in store for you. In the next 30 minutes, we've got some brilliant theatre news. We've got some interviews and a fantastic performance at the end of the show. Now, talking of fantastic performances, I have to start off tonight by saying a big congratulations to this guy, Sam Ryder. Yes, he did brilliantly, didn't he, last night in the Eurovision Song Contest, coming second representing Great Britain with the wonderful Space Man. And he smashed it. What a performance he gave there. Narrowly missing out on that top spot, but a big congratulations to the winners that we had, which were the Ukraine. I love the Eurovision. It is like theatre itself, isn't it? You've got these stunning vocalists, amazing songs, and some very different performances, shall I say. Anyway, talking about performances, who have we got on the show tonight? We have got these guys. Oh, it is going to be an absolute cracker if you like your musicals and you like your shows. Because as you'll see there, we have got Rob Bowden King, a really fantastic Altrincham guy. Yes, he's from around here. He's a singer, he's a performer, he is an actor, and he is going to be telling us all about his concert that is coming in July. It's called Musicals and Me. It's going to be fantastic. And as you can see there, that strange image on the left. Now, that is The Ocean at the End of the Lane. It's a national theatre production. We're going to have a sneak preview of that a little bit later on in Greater Manchester Theatre News. And we are also going to be talking to the Lowry about their summer season which is coming up and they have got some great things ahead so don't go anywhere at the end of the show as well we will have a performance by the wonderful Rob Bowden King he is going to be singing us out with Maria from West Side Story so talking of Rob we're going to kick off this evening with my interview with him which I did a little bit earlier on this week now you may recognize Rob from Britain's Got Talent he was on there in 2019 and got to the semi-final. As I say, a local lad. He is hugely, hugely talented and uh, I wanted to find out a little bit more about this concert that he's going to be doing at the Bowdoin Room. So take a look. I am going to be doing musicals and me. It's going to be a night of musical theatre um, with some special guests. It's going to be the musicals that have formed my love for the genre, if you will and i'm really excited for it uh, and it is special because it is in your hometown so yeah. are you expecting lots of support there on the night it's it's going to be an atmosphere right i uh, yeah i really think so i think it feels like it's going to be something really special and something really personal and to be able to in in, in the iconic venue that is the bowden rooms as well which is it's an old venue of, of Altrincham that has been recently refurbished actually over COVID and they've done such an amazing job making it the most beautiful um, performance venue and it, I think it's gonna be really special. I'm so so excited to uh, to bring it to the Altrincham stage. Oh me too and you know what musicals are my life as well. I was born mm. with jazz hands in the air Rob really was. <laughs> Musicals, it's there's so many of them. It must be quite difficult to pin down the ones that you want to sing and share out there. How did you do that then? You said they're quite special to you. Yeah, so I mean, it is really hard because even so, sort of looking at the musicals that I love and I grew up with and that sort of formed my love for it, I always, I'm a sucker for a ballad. So, you know, I was writing a list and I get halfway through and I'd be like, Oh, these are all really sad songs. Uh, I need to put something that's a bit bit happier. So I think it's a, it's it's hard to pin down. You, I think I had to be brutal with myself and go. Oh, they probably don't want to hear that really obscure musical that nobody's uh, listened to for many years. Um, but I think what I have put together, I think it's not quite finished yet. Don't get me wrong. But what we have put together is is quite amazing, and I'm really happy with sort of the flow of it and 
there are plenty of my absolute all-time favorite songs and musicals in there, along with a few curveballs and even some new musical theatre as well, which I'm really excited about. Oh, do you know what? I have seen you perform some musical theatre numbers. Specifically, I got really moved at a performance you did when you sung Defying Gravity. <laughs> yeah. That from Wicked was phenomenal. I mean, those notes are pretty epic anyway and yeah. at the time I videoed you and yeah. I remember messaging you because I got a message back on that video on social media from the one and only Kerry Ellis she originated the role of Alphabet in the West End and she yeah. give you the biggest tick ever she was like this guy is phenomenal uh Rob how did that feel it was absolutely surreal and not least because I saw Wicked in 2006 in London with Kerry as Alphaba, which was an experience in itself because before then I, I didn't really know of Kerry Ellis and I know she'd been in so much stuff like We Were Rock You and she was already getting quite big, but I'd never really, I was, I was only about 15, so I'd, I'd never heard of her. And then for somebody who I watched and fallen in love with as well, then has seen me sing a song that she is, iconic for because i do the the, the standard um musical theater the, the wicked version of the song but i also sing her brian may version of the song which i love the rock version yeah. oh yeah. yeah so it was just seeing that carrie ellis has watched me sing was just uh insane there you go Take yeah that one right off rob we'll have to get it down to the Bowden rooms imagine yes. that would be yes please oh, special guest carrie's get carrie watches the show so you know we can pull some hey, Kerry. Absolutely. <laughs> now, not only have I heard you, you know, thousands, if not millions, have heard you from Britain's Got Talent, which was back in 2019, the semi final. Okay. I feel you were cheated. I wanted you in that final, if not winning it. You were amazing, Rob, doing Conchita's song. You know, it was. I have complicated feelings, shall we say, to my, towards my time on Britain's Got Talent because it was an incredible experience. And when I auditioned at the Lowry, where I still work, um, and I sang Rise Like a Phoenix, it was the most surreal, amazing day of my life. Um, but as time went on, I, I got the overwhelming sense that m when I finished my semi-final performance, that would be the end of my journey. Um, and that that ended up happening. You know, they you really do get surrounded by people like, you're gonna do amazingly, you'll go to the final, and then actually on the day it doesn't happen. Um, I'm still very proud of myself, and I'm really happy with what I, what I did. I'm really happy with my performance. It wasn't really the song that I wanted to sing, um, but I'm still, you know, I'm still very proud of it. I thought it was epic, you know. <laughs> Oh, you you smashed it in my opinion you smashed it and it is a shame because like Simon Cowell called you a West End wonder in the making you know and mm. I feel that's where you should be right now you need to be on that stage but I don't know is that the dream or is it more about you know bringing an album out what what is the ultimate for you Rob it absolutely is being on the stage and being in musicals. Every time I watch a musical, I will pick a role. I'll see a role and I go, oh, I would love to try that. And I mean, there are plenty that stick in my head anyway. Things like Les Mis. I'd love to play Marius and Les Mis. Tony and West Side Story, wow. Fiera and Wicked. All these roles which I've seen, I think, God, I'd love to just have a stab at that. Um, musicals is the dream. And I think I've sort of... COVID's allowed me to sort of refocus a little bit because I did BGT and then I did a, a tour of the country with a panto. And I remember standing on the stage at the Liverpool Empire, having just sang my big solo and just everyone was just roaring back at me. Wow. And I was like, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to do the whole time. Um, and so since COVID, I think I've been able to refocus myself because I was really just singing for a long time. I wasn't really focusing on anything else. And... Britain's Got Talent definitely pushed me back in that direction. I did a new musical, actually, a workshop to a new musical back in October called Mallory on the Mountain. Oh, um, wow. So it's about George Mallory. Now, George Mallory was part of, was one of the climbers on the first expeditions up Everest in the early 1920s. Um, and it's 
hotly contested whether or not he actually made it to the top because on his final climb he died um and we don't know whether it was when he was on his way up or whether he was back on his way down um and he's local he's actually local to here he grew up in Mobley, just a few miles down the road Gosh. um yeah and this i saw this casting go out to play um andrew irvin who is climbing who was his climbing partner sort of a young 21 year old from birkenhead who also died on the climb um and Ollie Mills put together this amazing musical, a uh, beautiful musical with a gorgeous cast. And we workshopped it, saw what worked, saw what didn't. Um, and actually, I'm really excited because I'm bringing that uh, musical, Mallory on the Mountain, to the Bowden Rooms and doing a second preview of it with, two other, yeah, with three other members of the original cast. Because you've mentioned before, obviously, this isn't your first solo gig. You've performed at the Lowry, where it all started, on yeah. the Lyric stage for you. You were in the other theatre, the Keys Theatre, which yeah. must have been, been really special. Um, and you also still work at the Lowry. You know, yeah. we can see you there all the time. All the time. And don't don't come knocking, because I'm not very glamorous when I'm at work. But, um, You're always you glamorous, are, love. Carrying plates around and pouring pints, yeah, you know, I mean, this is this is it. I, I'm that concert was really special. That was at the tail end of 2019. It was a sellout, and it was absolutely stunning. I had a, a live band that felt really special. And actually, it's a sort of it, it was again a nice musical theatre in a similar vein to this one. But with this one, I've really thought about what I, what story I want to tell about myself. Why are these songs personal to me? Um, whereas then it was just a bit like, oh, I like these songs, so let's sing these. Um, but that was spectacular. And, you know, I am still there. The Lowry has a very special place in my heart. And, you know, when I was on BGT, David Williams was like, oh, you'll never go back to the Lowry. And in my head, I was thinking, oh, joke's on you. I'm back in on Tuesday, you know. <laughs> you know, so I mean, that was that was strange, though, because immediately 10 million people around the country knew where I worked. And so people would drop him. And I had fan mail sent to the Lowry. I had pictures sent to the Lowry. I had people would come in and wave at me. And wow. I felt like an animal in a zoo. That was a bit it strange. It's life changing, though, that moment yeah. where, you know, it gets aired and then that's it. You know, yeah. the full lot of people kind of getting in touch, more people following you. And, and that must have been a bit crazy. It was. You know, I, I don't think I. I don't think I was quite prepared for how much response I would get because once my audition aired, and again, I was at work that night and the audition went on and I was, I think I was first on that show. And we we watched it on a on a projector uh, in one of the small conference rooms, a bunch of us at work whilst trying to carry on working. And I then picked up my phone after it happened and it didn't stop for about four days it was just lit up, lit up, lit up, lit up, lit up for about four days. And I just wasn't... That can be overwhelming, though, as so well. Much. In the same... I had to just sort of put it to one side for a bit because I was like, I can't, I can't keep up. Every time I would open one thing, there'd be something else straight away, straight away. Um, and that was, you know, especially after the audition, that was so... But, you know, everyone who knows you and, and didn't, and, you know, it was a, se a secret that I kept for months as well, because the auditions are back in February. So I had to keep that secret for a really long time. And I had kept it very well, which is unlike me, because when you I'm excited good. about something, I, yeah. I want to tell everyone. So all these people just sort of surprised, you know, the family members who hadn't really told and... You know, I was very strict. I was scared. <laughs> Can you still watch it? Because it's on at the moment. Can you still sit there and watch it? Or are you kind of thinking, oh, I know what's going on behind the scenes? Yeah. It? Yeah. And the thing is, actually, I, I've not watched it since my year. I watched the final that year, which I wasn't going to. Um, and I could see, I, you know, the things that I had noticed backstage, um, and things that I had suspected, I watched happen live on TV. And I was like, you know, to somebody who wasn't there in the thick of it, you probably wouldn't see it. it you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's TV. It is very produced. What I will say is I, I've heard a few people on social media say that this series feels very canned. Um, it is. It is. I, I can't put too fine a point on it. It's very produced. It's very it's almost scripted, really, you know. 
it's interesting, isn't it, to find out what goes on behind the scenes of those big shows. And for me, in 2019, Rob was definitely my winner. It was such a shame he missed out on the final. But as we say, cream rises to the top and Rob has got so much further to go. He is a complete star in the making. So watch this space. Now, talking of things to watch out for, I was out and about this week and I'm going to tell you all about it in this. Greater Manchester Theatre News because I went to the Big Smoke. Yes, I was in the West End for a very special reason. I went to see this production. It's called The Ocean at the End of the Lane. And it is a production that the Lowry are bringing to uh, the theatre this Christmas. It's their thrilling Christmas production. Now, it was only announced that this was coming this week, so it is very, very new. I hot-footed it down to London to kind of find out all about it for you, and I've got to say, I was really, really impressed at the show. Now, you might not expect something like this at Christmas, okay, because it is quite dark, it's quite intense as well, but it is truly fantastic in terms of a spectacle. It's hard to describe what the premise is, but if you like things like Doctor Who, Stranger Things, this is going to be right up your street. It's about a young lad who befriends a girl and she kind of takes him into a different dimension. I can't really give any more than that away, but as I say, the effects in this are absolutely stunning. The acting is superb. And you always know with a National Theatre production, you are going to get something really top notch. And I have to say, at the end of this, I was really, really blown away. So if you fancy something a little bit alternative for Christmas, instead of your usual panto, you know, instead of like the hearts and flowers, then this is definitely for you and especially one for the teenagers although the guidance is 12 plus on this all right so just think about that one as you can see there it's running at the Lowry Salford from the 12th of December until the 8th of January and I have to say from my point of view it gets a really really big thumbs up from me it was great to see it really great to have that sneak preview and if you want to see a little bit more about it, take a look at our trailer. I like stories. Peter Pan? Alice in Wonderland? Nothing looks like what it is on the inside. What makes you who you are? Your face or what you do? Things what lurk out there. <laughs> Can you be brave? But this, it isn't pretend, it is real. All of it was dreamed into existence. Go away! Give me my boy! No, you stay out, stay out! Will anything ever be like it was before? Wow. See what I mean? It really is a spectacle. So you know where to go. Go to the Lowry website if you want to get your tickets in advance for that. And as I say, it is expected to be a thrilling Christmas offering at the Lowry. Now, if you want to find out any more about theatre in our wonderful city, or if you want some advice on where to go, where to eat, where to drink, where to stay, all you need to do is go to our lovely friends website. Of course, it is ilovemanchester.com. And throughout the week, you can follow me on the socials, Live in the Hive, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, at Live in the Hive 21. Do spread the word. We always love a little bit of a follow. Now let's take a look at our next interview of the evening. Of course, I've teased it all night. I have been speaking to the Lowry about their summer season. This really is going to whet your appetite for what is to come. They've got some great shows on the lineup. And here we have the wonderful Steve to tell us all about it.
first off, let's talk about Darren Brown because he's back with a brand new show after six years. This is his first show, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think it takes them quite a while to make a show. In fairness, because the, the, the you know the, the work that goes into them is 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 quite spooky. Um, Darren Brown comes here. This is the first time he's done two weeks with us, and it's heading towards a complete sellout. Wow. Um, this is one of the shows that I think was originally planned for twenty twenty. Then we had to reschedule it to twenty two because of lockdown. So we're delighted to finally get it here. Um, if anyone hasn't seen Darren Brown, I urge you most strongly to do so. It take it's. It, I don't know how you describe him. Calling him a magician is just like not even close to it. Um, I think he's a brilliant theatrical performer. When you watch him, he has such presence um, and he's such an extraordinary show. I, 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 I work in the Lowry. I've, I can tell you a little secret. I've looked through his seating plans to see if he has any plants in the audience or if he's bought any tickets. He definitely hasn't. I've also watched his show on more than one night and the tricks are different every night. So the answers aren't always the same. Oh, I um, love this. The inside of I don't know. He, I have no idea how he does it. No. But you talk then about him on stage. I mean, this is called showman, and this is yeah. really what he is, right? Yeah. Um, he, he would he would see himself in the tradition of the Victorian kind of um, you know, uh, ex extravagant sort of um, larger than life show of his characters. When you meet him off stage, he's actually very shy. Is he? He's very shy and very quiet. When he goes on stage, he's got this really sort of brooding um presence um is is, is it rock or chat he's also an artist you know he does paintings his paintings are, his paintings are brilliant oh okay so, well there you go i've learned something new i was going to say the show is very much secret but i feel like you've given us some secrets already steve so i don't well, really I've, I've, the secret i've given you is i've no idea how he does it and my, my, my only conclusion is that he genuinely is magic and then well, that's, what, really that's what you're supposed to time. say, you know, no idea, no idea. All right, well, let's move on. Can I just say one, one final thing about Darren, because yeah. it is quite interesting, bear with me. Um, for the first time ever, um, we're doing a BSL interpretive performance. That's so great. Darren Brown has never been had BSL interpretation before, um, which, is, which I think is quite a nice thing to do. But the interesting thing is the only reason we're able to do it is because I found a BSL interpreter who's a member of the Magic Circle. Wow, how did you find? Well, wow. I just happened to know. <laughs> she happened to mention one day that she was she was a member of the Magic Circle. And I said, "Oh, really fancy doing a uh, performance of Darren Brown?" And she said, "Yeah, I've never. I'd love to do that um, because obviously the, the, she has to know how some of the tricks work, and he wouldn't let anyone else know. But because she's in the Magic Circle, um, he, he's prepared to share it with her. I just thought that was a great story. I'd like to pick her brain as well, wouldn't you? Yeah, she's great. Oh, amazing. All right. Well, let's move on to some of the musicals then. Mm. Of course, Six is back. You know, I think Six absolutely adores the Lowry. You know, this is where it, it first came to us, didn't it, quite a few years ago. I saw it back in December through to January uh, of this year and, and it's coming back again. Brilliant. Yeah. This 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 feels like the end of the not, it feels like the culmination of, of a long relationship. Uh, it came to the keys originally, and then it was meant to be in the keys this Christmas. But we probably wouldn't have done this August run, but we lost some of the Christmas shows because of COVID, and we turned away a lot of people. Um, and it's great just finally to be able to do one mega big two week celebration of six. I think six is such a joyous joyous show, and um, there are so many imitators of it now. Um, mm -hmm. It's great to see a show that has an all-female cast, an all-female band. It's bright, it's very British, it's funny, it's accessible. It works on every level you could possibly want. And the audience that it attracts is just so good for theatres because it's, 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 it's teenagers, it's younger people, it's great. The, 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 the six has become a bit of a cult. People follow it around the country to see different queens. Um, I, there are now, would you believe, 60 cast members who have been in six. Wow. Oh my uh, so there, there are 60 queens and the real mega fans have like a checklist so if someone if some particular actress is playing Anne Hathaway in some particular venue Anne Hathaway she's not a queen Anne Boleyn um they'll go to that venue just to see her because they've got like a checklist to kept to check off all the queens oh. there are some mega queens believe it or not who know all six parts uh, that's going some because there, there's a lot of dialogue that goes on that with the, all the songs and stuff. I would yeah. like to have a go at Anne Boleyn at Don't Lose Your Head. So if ever a queen comes off stage, that can be me, right, Steve? I'll, I'll organise that for you. Thank you. 
I can do that. Um, what, what the, the, the reason some queens know all six parts is because of COVID. Because rather than have, you know, you, you couldn't tell which queen was ever going to be missing. So some, some very brave actresses learned all six parts so they could step into any part at a day's notice. That and we had one moment at Christmas with COVID where we had five queens in, who were in Salford. Uh, a sixth queen arrived who the five queens had never met before. They literally met on stage at ten past seven. Went on stage at eight and did the show. I never remember met that. Before. I remember yeah. that. I saw it on your socials, and I was like, yeah. "That is incredible." Yeah. Talk that about the reality of the show must go on. That is taking yeah. it to another level. But yeah. what I have to say about six before we move on to something else is what is brilliant is the Lowry brought it to us. And now, you know, it's such a mega hit. It's been a hit in the West End and it's on Broadway. But we mm. got it at the Lowry and it still comes back here. And and I just that that just shows how you know how great and important one, it is. I think one of the great things that Lowry is good at is 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 maintaining relationships with producers. So um that, that show is made by by a producer called Kenny Wax, who who invited me to see it at Edinburgh in a room with two hundred people many, many years ago. And we've kind of followed his progress ever since. And the next show on the list, Identical, is another one of Kenny Wax's shows. I know. Um, and of course, Identical is based on the parent trap. Actually, there was a book before the film, wasn't there? I think it was a book originally. And I think there's been two, you'll know better than me, Michelle. I think there's been two film versions. Because there? There, there was a 50s or 60s version and then an update. I prefer the 60s version to the Lindsay Lohan version. Yeah, I've no, got to say that. But of course, the story description <coughs> is going to be immense, right? Mm, yeah, I mean, this, this is a completely new production. Again, it's delayed from 2020. It will open at Nottingham Playhouse and then it will come to us for two weeks. And then the intention very much is that it will go into the West End. Um, so again, it's we're getting like a preview of something which we think might be quite a big show over Christmas. It's written by a couple of composers called Styles and Drew who possibly aren't very well known, but they did the musical arrangements for Mary Poppins, which is in the West End, and they also did Half a Sixpence. So in the sort of, in the in the industry, the, the, the sort of the, the best you can get. And the director of Identical is a certain man called Trevor Nunn, Ooh. who of course was uh, the original artist director of the RSC for many years, but he also of course was the original director of Les Mis. Absolutely. He is top quality, isn't he? I mean, he's won so many awards, Trevor Nunn, yeah. and I think having him behind this show again just gives it that big tick. So in terms of pedigree, you know, you, you really, you've got Kenny Wax producing it, who's spending a fortune on it. This isn't going to be a small show. Um, you've got Trevor Nunn, Styles and Drew. It's it's almost like a dream team. Um, as As Kate mentioned before, we've got three pairs of twins because you can't have the same twins every night, obviously, because you've got to rotate them and rest them because of child protection rules. So they've auditioned three sets of twins who are playing the leads. And I've seen some of the rehearsal footage and it looks fantastic. And we've also got the rest of the kids are from the Northwest. So we've been auditioning local kids to be the sort of schoolmates and the rest of it. So it's going to be quite a strong local interest in it as well, I think. That's fantastic. And of course, the premise of that one is they're identical twins. They got split at birth because their parents split up. They meet at summer camp when they're about 11 or 12 and they swap places to try and get their mum and dad back together. Just very quickly, Fisherman's Friends um, is a great British story. This is this is a true story. It's it's all about sea shanties. Remember, sea shanties had their moment last year. Well, this, this is, is based a on of... the real story, isn't it? Yeah. Of the fishermen. Yeah. Yeah, there were, there were a group of friends who met in a pub in Cornwall every week and sang for their own pleasure. And a London producer happened to be there a whole day and saw them and said, you guys, you know, you're brilliant, you need a career. And they went from a pub in Cornwall to the pyramid stage at Glastonbury, performing to a couple hundred thousand people. Um, the story since been made into a film as well. Uh, there's also Fisherman's Friends 2 coming out, which is the latest film. Apparently Fisherman's Friends is the most successful British film of all time. Uh, it beat calendar. It beat calendar girls. It's in that sort of league. Gosh. It's a bit. It's a bit under the radar. But again, it's like a massive story. Um, this is a stage musical of it. Um, it features some fantastic singing. Great story. Very feel good. A bit of a sad bit in the middle. If you know the story of Fisherman's Friends, uh, there, it wasn't without some tragedy. Um, opened the new theatre in Cornwall. Hall for Cornwall was the first show on there. And now it's coming on tour and it's coming to us in September. Oh, fantastic. And the last one I was going to mention is Girl, from the, Girl North from the North Country. Yeah. This is actually the show to see right now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. This is this this is the one that um, I've been playing the soundtrack in my car for the last week. Uh, if it's on Spotify, and I urge you to listen. To this. You might not think you like the music of Bob Dylan, 
but this show kind of takes the songs and just reinterprets them in a whole new way. Um, I saw this at the, uh, I was going to say the Young Vic, but it was the Old Vic when it was first done. Um, it features the songs of Bob Dylan. It's written by a man called Conor McPherson, mm -hmm. who is an Irish playwright who wrote things like The Weir and The Seafarer. It's a great story. It's set in sort of Depression era America. 1934, I think, off the top of my head. It's a bit like East of Eden or The Grapes of Wrath. It's got that kind of feel to it. It's just gorgeous. It's all acting musicians. So you see all the musicians on stage, very laid back, very stripped bare. Um, it sold out in London. It's been on Broadway, I think, for months now. Um, they're doing a the first ever UK tour. I'm delighted we've got it. It's exactly the sort of, I'm not a massive musical fan. This is just a great piece of theatre. It's just very, very, very classy intelligent storytelling and um i think i shouldn't say this i think it's probably going to be the highlight of our year what a lineup i mean something there for everyone in that summer season i know i'm going to be racing to the lower in stalford and ticking some of those shows off my list and i can't wait now, don't forget, we are still looking for some fantastic amateur operatic dramatic societies from across Greater Manchester to be part of our new feature, Spotlight. So if you're in one, you know, a friend or a family member that's in one, then do drop us a line and nominate them. You can email us at liveinthehiveuk at gmail.com and I would love to find out about them and they could be featured on this very show. Brilliant. Now, a big thanks to my guests this evening. We've had the wonderful Steve at the Lowry and Rob Bowden King. And Rob is going to play us out of the show with a fantastic performance that he did in lockdown of Maria from West Side Story. You are going to love this. Until next Sunday, stay safe, have a great week, and I'll see you then. The most beautiful sound I ever heard Maria, 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 Maria All the beautiful sounds of the world in a single word Maria, 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 Maria Maria, Maria, Maria I just met a girl named Maria And suddenly that name will never be the same to me Maria, I just kissed a girl named Maria Now suddenly I found how wonderful the sound can be Maria and there's music playing Say it's soft and it's almost like praying Maria, I'll never stop saying Maria